The truth is, I can't tell my younger self this, so I'm gonna tell you. Starting off, when I was a little kid, I was the youngest boy in all of my family. Naturally, I looked up to all of them, and I wanted to be so cool just like them. So the things that I liked, the way that I dressed, everything I did was kind of to please them in a way. For example, most of the things that I enjoyed doing as a kid, I did because of them. Whether it was the movies that I watched or the games that I played, it was all because I learned what was cool because of them. But here comes the problem. They were older than me, so they grew out of things before I did. So now the things that they taught me and made me think were cool are no longer cool anymore, but I still like them, so I had a choice to make. Do I stop liking this thing because my siblings don't like it anymore, or do I keep liking it because I like it? The first thing I remember choosing for myself is that I chose to keep loving Pokemon. But it was going to be my secret, because it was embarrassing for me to still like Pokemon because my siblings and everyone around me had already grown out of it. This video is in direct rebellion to that mentality I had as a kid. Today we are making a Pokemon denim jacket so that I can wear it around with pride. Not gonna lie, even when I made this video, I thought I would never wear this because in my head I still thought it was so lame for me to be so proud about something so silly that I liked as a kid. I was just glad that I got to hang out with my friend Tommy and we got to make something cool together that I would just hang up in my closet and it'd be a good memory. I never thought I'd actually wear this. This is what Tommy does. Tommy makes videos about him making clothing. He finds clothing that people no longer want anymore, like this denim jacket, and adds cool touches to it. Today, we're taking this Pokemon vintage bed sheet from 1996, and we're gonna cut it up and put it on the back of this denim jacket. It sounds pretty simple, right? <laughs> well, it's not as simple as you think, and it's not as hard as you would think either. Since this is a massive bed sheet, we're gonna have to cut a piece of it out, but it's also very thin, so that's gonna add a few troubles later. Before we started cutting up the fabric, we had to lay it out and figure out which Pokemon I wanted wear on the back of my jacket. Tommy doubted how much of a Pokemon fan that I am and made me name all 151 Pokemon on this sheet, but little does he know that I know all 898 Pokemon names. Once we decided the positioning of the sheet, we need to pin them down so we can map it out and then begin to cut it. We're going to cut it a little wide so we have extra fabric to play with. This will make it so much easier for us in the end. This part was really sad though because I watched him butcher some of my lifelong friends over here. We tried to save Eevee the best that we could, but we had a cutter in half. But Tommy did tell me that he was going to make up for it later and save an Eevee and put it somewhere else in the jacket. It is kind of funny to think this was some little kid's bed sheet that they slept on every night and now I'm going to wear it around on my back. Random fun fact, almost every year for Halloween, I was Pikachu all throughout elementary school until i finally grew out of the costume remember how i mentioned how thin it is right here you're gonna see just how thin it is it almost blows away in the wind we're gonna have to strengthen the fabric of this thin sheet so that it can actually be durable on my back now that the correct shape is cut out we're gonna go ahead and take out all of our pins so we can begin to add some more fabric so that this isn't so thin not only does this want to blow away in the wind you can actually see through the fabric so Tommy's going to have us lay this piece on top of a nice piece of thick white fabric. Then it's time to cut around all of that again. It's going to seem like we're making a lot of scraps and wasting a lot of things when it comes to this project, but I promise you Tommy is all about reducing, reusing, and recycling things, and he even makes art out of the most random scraps. If you want to see more of his work, I'm going to tag him down in the description below, and he also is doing a giveaway to anyone that comments what I tell you to do at the end of my video. Now that we have our nice thick fabric underneath our thin bed sheet, we need to glue them two together. Tommy uses this really cool fabric glue that comes in a sheet. In the same way that we cut out the thick piece of fabric, we're going to cut out this glue to match the same shape. This part might look just a little wonky because we're trying to use scraps that he had from before, but it all works out. We have enough. Just like last time, we're going to leave a little bit of extra on the edges so we have a lot more to work with. This part was so fun. The glue sheets are attached to a piece of wax paper that we have to peel off so we can put the glue in between our two pieces of fabric. I know you're probably still wondering how this is glue, but trust me, it's very cool. Just stay patient. I'll show you in just a second. Our first layer is down, our glue is down. Now we're going to add our final layer on top. Once this is all laid out, we need to make sure there are no wrinkles in this because if there's wrinkles in the glue, it's going to transfer over to our final product. Since everything's lined up, we're going to trim off the excess glue. I'm not sure if you've guessed how this glue is going to work so far, but if you haven't, go ahead and just comment down below how you think it's going to work. Come on, go do it. You have about three or five or six seconds until I tell you, well, it's with an iron. It's heat. You melt it together. If you scroll back to where I peeled the wax paper away from the glue, you can see it's a little mesh made from drizzling little strands of glue. 
Once the iron heats that up, it melts the two pieces together and creates one piece of fabric. Now here comes the fun but stressful part. Now we get to sew it onto the back of the jacket. First, we need to position it in the right place on the jacket and pin that down. Then we're going to find our edges and then crease them over with the iron so that it's going to be so much easier when we go to sew them. While you do this, be careful of the pins because they will poke you and you will bleed and you might accidentally stain your fabric. This iron is about to make some really nice crisp edges right here. Trigger warning, a bug. It's actually the shed exoskeleton of a bug, but it looks like the same thing. Did you know the original idea of catching and collecting Pokemon came from a little kid's bug collection? I wonder if their love for collecting bugs was as much of a secret as my love for collecting Pokemon was. I was so dedicated to nobody finding out that in high school, I created this elaborate plan to make sure no one ever knew I played the game still. The first step was to buy the games. I didn't have a car and I was way too embarrassed to ask somebody to help me buy them. So I had my brother take me to CVS to buy some chapstick. Yes, you're right. You cannot buy pokemon games at cvs but you can buy amazon gift cards at cvs so i would go inside and buy some chapstick but my brother didn't know i was also buying amazon gift cards i would then make an amazon account and buy the games from amazon and get them delivered to my house at a time when my brother would drop me off from school but then he'd go hang out with his girlfriend and no one else would be home so i'd get the games and be able to hide them this plan worked for months no one ever found out that i bought them or that i was playing them until one day my sister got very suspicious she started to realize that i was sneaking off and i was being really weird she could tell that i was hiding something but she didn't know what that something was so she started doing some investigating my sister is two years younger than me so at the time she was 12 and she could not crack the case or figure out what i was doing so she eventually just told my parents and since everybody thought i was doing something really bad i eventually had to tell them that this whole time i was just playing pokemon and i was afraid to get made fun of well they did make fun of me but they didn't make fun of me for playing the games they made fun of how far i went to make sure that no one would find out i'm not sure why i was so scared for anyone to know because it was just a video game but i learned a lot from it and to this day we still laugh at the story now here i am 10 years later telling you that i still play pokemon and i even wear this jacket so that everyone knows it i've learned that all along i had nothing to be afraid of and now it's actually pretty cool if you still like pokemon this was definitely the trickiest part of the jacket going around this edge the fabric kept wanting to bunch up and crease and just look bad so we eventually figured out a solution made a few slits and then folded them over and tucked them in and you couldn't tell and ended up looking great but i'm not gonna lie when it came time to sew this i let tommy do it because i was not trying to sew a stitch around that rounded edge now it's time for our little game to prove to me and Tommy that you made it to the end of the video. Comment down below your favorite Pokemon typing, but try to only use emojis. Now, if you want to win something special from Tommy's giveaway, go do it on his video as well. I'm so proud of this jacket that we made, and I'm so proud of everything that it represents for me. I want to give a big thank you to Tommy for helping me make my very own piece of clothing. And of course, I had to do it because I knew you'd be upset with me if I didn't. This is a loop, so go ahead and watch again. I hope maybe you learned at least one thing from this video, but 